One of the important aspects that we'd like to highlight throughout this uh, book is the concept of uh, scale, that uh, processes may take place across many scales, uh, biological processes, physical processes, even the description of the uh, parameters may manifest itself in different scales and it's important to keep track of the scales. We're dealing with spatial scales from grains to continent or with temporal scales from milliseconds for chemical reactions to many uh, to millennia for uh, soil formation. So the question is how do we maintain consistent representation that tells us or inform us about the scale of the process and how do we handle the uh, transition from one scale to another. So first a bit of uh, perspective on the range of scales that we have to deal with. In the Ved in Vedas on hydrology uh, and environmental sciences in general we are concerned and are interested in processes taking place at scales ranging from pores which could be a micron or even smaller than a micron all the way to uh, samples, profiles, fields uh, watersheds and even continents. So we may have uh, a process which say uh, water flow and pores taking place from uh, scales of microns to scales of many many kilometers, 10 or more order of magnitude in space. It is not clear that the physics that govern the process at the micron scale would manifest itself when we have uh, the same equation applied across kilometers. It's almost certainly not going to be the same. Moreover, the parameters that we use to describe the uh, phenomena may be completely different at different scales and these are some things that uh, we need to keep in mind. In some cases we know what to do, in most cases it is completely unclear and it is in the cutting edge of uh, earth sciences to try and resolve these issues. I'd like to point out also that in addition to the spatial scales which are intuitively understood, there is a whole range of co or companion range of uh, temporal scales. Um, and that again, uh, I'll give just an example. As you see here in this slide, we have uh, processes from molecular reactions that happen at the micron or submicron nanometer scale in milliseconds, all the way to planetary processes that may take uh, uh, take place over many uh, thousands of kilometers and many millions of years. Uh, uh, as an example that we are a bit more uh, closer to us would be the, uh, the scale of soil formation which typically doesn't happen in a small pocket but rather on a domain that is affected by vegetation and climate so it will be of the orders of hundreds maybe kilometer scale and at uh, uh, time scales of uh, hundreds of years to many thousands of years. So this uh, just illustrates the interplay between spatial and temporal scale. Uh, the confusing thing is that equations very simple like the water balance equation which we'll talk about a lot in which we balance the inputs precipitation and irrigation with outputs evaporation, drainage, runoff and changes in storage. The same equation applies to, uh, to a pot in which you grow your plants on your desk and to a continent when you try to balance the, uh, the water cycle in that uh, landscape. Uh, and of course uh, you can understand intuitively that the, uh, the information inputs to these uh, calculations, the observations, the errors uh, and even the physics that govern these uh, processes may be different although the fundamental equation may look uh, the same. An example of what we do about uh, this uh, issue of scales uh, comes to play uh, in, the in the definition of the representative elementary volume. The idea is this, if I have a porous medium and I'd like to know what is the average porosity or the fraction of the volume of the pores relative to the volume of the sample in the medium, if I use a uh, two small scale of observation as manifested here by these two squares, I may land in a pore or I may land on a grain and that my interpretation of the porosity will be either zero when I land on the grain or 100% if I land on a pore. As I increase my um, spectacles or, or field of view, I'll start getting some oscillations until a certain scale 
in which if I increase the, the observation size or the volume uh, further, I will not get changes in the property, in this case, porosity. We call this uh, uh, volume or scale the representative elementary volume, and it is a very important concept in representing processes in a domain that when you zoom on it looks almost impossible to do anything with, whereas when you average it to a certain quantity, you can plug in the values of this uh, representative elementary volume into differential equations and make some predictions. So to summarize, keep in mind the representation of similar processes across scales. Sometimes it will be calculation of evaporation at an instantaneous value at a day or at a month, and the results need to be interpreted accordingly, and also the data input need to be interpreted accordingly. Different scales might require different types of averaging. Think about infiltration into a uniform soil column or into a heterogeneous landscape. So we sometimes need to devise scale-appropriate parameters for describing, say, infiltration over a heterogeneous landscape. And of course, uh, the information available, the resolution of the information, and the um, strategies for upscaling will be a theme that we'll visit as we go to solid transport and to uh, infiltration, for example, and other processes, because this matter of scales is very important for uh, uh, for realistic understanding and application of the concepts that we learn in this book.